You're watching Hellbent Holler live, part of the Hellbent Media Network. Grab a drink, settle in, and get ready for the show. What's up, everybody? Good to see you. Let me know in the chat that you can see me and hear me, and we'll get started with the show. All right. I know everybody's probably shocked because you know who is not here. Let me know you can hear me. Loud and clear. Thank you, Goshawk. All right. Here we go. What's up, guys? My name is Jesse. There is no Joe here. This is just a blank space. I know. We're all shocked. Um, Joe had to work late, so Joe will probably show up at some point during the show, but I didn't want to cancel it or anything um, because we always enjoy these Monday evenings when we get to hang out with you guys. So you just get little old me all by myself today uh, until he gets in from work. Uh, his birthday was Saturday, so I, think, I guess they figured he's another year older. They better get all of they can get out of him at this point. So, all right. Oh, I will say, though, I thought I would never get to use this again. But there you go. The Joe is X'd. All right. Joe should be in at some point. I know you guys are going to miss him, um, but hopefully I do good enough a job to keep y'all out and about with us today. So let's see here. I'm going through the chat. Everybody's just saying hello. I want to say welcome to the show. Welcome to everybody in chat. It is great to see all of my friends in there and everybody that we know from the channel. Um, it is awesome to see you guys in here. And I'm going to start going through here. And because I am by myself, I'll be going through here as best I can. So please be patient. God is not finished with me yet. So um, Lady Wolf, I hope you're doing better. But she, Lady Wolf had something here to say. Uh, let's congratulate Jesse and Joe for topping 20,000 subscribers. Um, we hit 20,000 subscribers the other day. And we are kind of shocked that we got to this kind of level without having an insanely viral video or doing TikToks or anything like that. Um, we just put videos here on this channel. And so it's all growth from this. Our videos, our long form videos, our investigations, um, all of that is from that. So it's organic growth. 
um, that we are insanely proud of. And we couldn't do it without you guys. You guys have been here. A lot of you have been here since the very beginning. And there is no way in the world we could have done it without you. So I want to thank you guys for being part of this journey and joining us in this weird little project that we started all those years ago. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't that long ago that we decided to start doing this. Uh, and we started getting really serious about it a couple years ago and started really diving into uh, really improving our equipment, improving our skill sets, uh, improving the way that we filmed everything and just learning about it, diving head first and pretty much making it our entire lives. So um, we went full tilt boogie and this is where we're at right now. And like somebody else said, uh, actually, like Kim Drescher said, 20,000 is just the beginning. That's true because we are going forward, full steam ahead, head down hard charger. We are going. Um, every day we work on improving what we do and how we present it to you all. We take it very seriously and it's become pretty much our lives at this point. I've been sitting in front of my computer editing all day. Um, so my eyeballs are about to fall out of my head, but that's okay. I'm currently working on the video from our North Georgia excursion, our return to North Georgia. And I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do about it. It's a lot of footage. It's really long. Um, so if you guys want to give me some feedback on what you would like, um, would you like two episodes uh, broken up into two, maybe one hour episodes? Or would you like just a really super long video, um, hour and 45 minute video maybe? Um, I'm, I'm not done with it yet, so I'm still trying to hash that out myself. So if you could let me know what you guys would prefer, what you would like, because there's a lot of footage because we were out there for a while. Um, we camped and everything. So there's a lot of footage from us going back out there and kind of reestablishing our presence in that research area in North Georgia. So just let us know what you'd like to see. And I'm going to be, I'm going to warn you right now, I'm going to fall insanely behind on the chat. And I do mean insanely behind. So I'm going to back up just a hair here and start reading this. L.W. Marshall, thank you for that, sir. Thankful to be a part of it. Your hard work is paying off. Proud of y'all. Thank you for being part of it. Thank you for being part of this um, project, this experiment. Um, we, When we set out to do this, we wanted to do this our own way and really approach it in our own way. Joe and I are pretty hardcore type A personalities. And we never half-ass anything that we do. It is full speed ahead no matter what we do, no matter how mundane the thing is that we do. And not to say this is mundane, but even in mundane things in our daily life, we are full speed ahead. Uh, that's why I got held up tattooed on my knuckles. So um, that's why we wanted to do something completely different, something unique to us, something that really um, expressed our personalities and our take on the subject on dog man on sasquatch on the paranormal and we wanted to really show you guys a different way of looking at things i think that a lot of people were really tired of the same approaches um the same kind of the same kind of people doing it the same techniques the same places it just it i think it got stale for a lot of people like it got stale for us and we're excited to pursue this in a very unique, different, um, and novel way. So I think we've done pretty, pretty okay at that. Um, and we've got a lot more tricks up our sleeves. That's part of it too, is that we are always thinking, always working and always improving. So, uh, we are, we're doing, doing my best. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm going to go through here. Um, I'm just going to look at the chat here and try to catch up. I'm so behind already. You guys are so fast. Um, a lot of people are saying two parts, so that's cool. I'll do it in two parts. If I can do it in two parts, um, I can get part one out a lot quicker than I can get a giant one out because I'm working on it right now. So 
Um, we'll do it in two parts, I think. That sounds good. I have a gavel over there. I need to put that on my table. And when we make a decision, I need to throw the gavel down. And that'll be the, uh, the final word. Oh, God, now we're getting some long video votes. Okay, all right. A lot of people said two parts. We'll do that. I think we'll do that because I can get it out a lot quicker that way. Um, so you guys can check that out. Um, that guy, Chris says, <laughs> regardless of length, please do another members only live release. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, Tuesday, we did a members only investigation. And so what we're doing for the members right now is we are... I know we said we were going to kind of not go to the Grove for a while. What we've decided to do is because the Grove is so active, we kind of can't step away from it. We're going to do all of our main investigations right now in other locations to kind of shake off the Grove a little bit. But for the members, we're going to do members only live investigations at the Grove. And we're going to be conducting a series of experiments Last Tuesday, we brought something into the Grove that was hopefully going to stir up some activity. We brought a certain stone that we got in the LBL that we got while we were in the LBL. We took that into the Grove just to see if that kind of energy from that stone would stir up any paranormal or Sasquatch or what have you activity that's going on out there. And everything was kind of normal for a lot of that investigation. We're going around, we found some weird markings on trees that could be, you know, just something, nothing out of the ordinary. It could be just a simple explanation for that. They were kind of weird and out of place because they're in a weird spot in the woods. Um, but we're kind of going around and looking. We found a bunch of these deep like holes that look like kind of like hidey holes for something that you could get into the really deep like dugout holes that it looks like something has gone into them and you can kind of hear over. Um, and I, when I think about that, I hate to get off subject here. I guess it's still on subject. A friend of ours told us a story um, that he heard from a couple of gentlemen at a gun shop that he goes to all the time. And these old timers were out hunting. And one of them said that he saw this he described a sasquatch basically but he described it and he described that it was wearing sort of a deer skull mask and he was chasing a deer through the woods and this guy is up in this tree stand and he's chasing this deer through the woods and then all of a sudden another one jumps out of this hole like a trapdoor spider grabs the deer and snaps its neck so when I found these deep holes, and I'm not talking about those little holes that we kept finding in the grove. I'm talking about big, deep, just dug out holes. That's kind of what that made me think of uh, right off the bat. That's what it made me think of is this story um, of this trapdoor spider Sasquatch thing. So that was kind of weird. But during the course of that investigation, I was going back into the woods and we're talking and all of a sudden in the distance, there is this crazy scream. Like I have no idea what it was. I had a huge adrenaline dump and we had, we were trying out lavalier mics in the field for the first time. So the scream was so loud, even the lav mics picked it up, which is crazy to me. Um, but everybody was like, everybody heard it. And they're like, we have no idea what that was. And we had no idea what it was, but it was so loud and it was so frightening. Um, it flipped us both out pretty bad. Uh, but we have some more experiments uh, in our back pockets of what we are going to do out in the Grove. And we're just going to do that for the members' lives out there because we're going to get a little weird with it. And we're going to just keep that <laughs> for a smaller group. I don't think the general public is ready for us to get that weird with some of the stuff we have planned to do out in the Grove. So we're going to get a little crazy with it out there and just kind of keep that as a members only live. So definitely if you are a member to keep an eye out, cause we'll be doing another one of those very soon. So keep an eye out and I'm going to, and I'm never going to catch up with the chat. It helps to have two people to do this. It really does. Really does. Zach 92 said the scream that member live was crazy. Yeah. So 
a lot of people had a lot of different suggestions of what it could be. It could be a fox screaming. It didn't sound like a fox screaming to me, but you know, you never know. You gotta kind of, you gotta be skeptical of everything you see and everything you hear um, out there. Because a lot of times, if you're out there in the woods, and I, I remember the first time that Joe and I heard a barred owl in person. It scared the bejesus out of us. We both lost our shit. Uh, because it was just such a shocking sound and it was so close to us. We'd never heard one in person before. So you're out in the woods and you have your adrenaline pumping and you're like, oh my God. And then after a couple of minutes, we were like, that's, that's a barred owl. That's a barred owl. It's okay. It's a barred owl. So um, it's good to kind of go back and, you know, collect yourself and then review your evidence and be like, okay, so this is something completely normal. There's been times in our investigations where we will, something will happen. We'll hear something, see something, experience something. And then I go back and I'm like, you know what? There could be a logical explanation for that. Like I'll get a weird sound and I'll be like, okay, that could be a weird frog or, <laughs> you know, um, an owl or something. So you try to compare it to audio samples that you can find the best you can. And if it is questionable, I tend to throw it out if it's too, too questionable and too close to say a fox scream or something. So it's good to constantly be questioning what you're doing. All right, Julie Bug, thank you for that. For $20, uh, $20 for 20,000 subs. Love you guys. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. Sharon Guy, thank you. You're doing a great job, Jesse. I know. I don't have my I don't have my resident talker with me. So um, yeah, it's just you just get me at night, guys. Joe's doing a great job. I don't know if Joe's doing a great job. Joe's not here. Joe's at work. I'm hoping he's doing a great job for his other boss, not me. So let's see. I ain't got no sleeves, Lieutenant Jesse. I know I have the most bipolar outfit today, but I've been just in my office with my headphones on. So my hair is uh, not working well for us today. All right, I'm going through the chat. Every 15 minutes that Joe's not here, take a drink. Yeah. I'm going to be drinking my coffee because i got to work on some editing. I'm going to be up editing all night tonight. So going through, this is difficult to do alone because I'm trying to read all this. I need like my cat to be here with us. Kelly S says scary, feral people. So I've had some weird questions about the feral people thing. Um, especially in some of the areas that people claim there are feral people because these are highly populated um, areas that they claim there are feral people in. So these are national parks, um, you know, heavily traveled areas. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, could there be a population of people living out there? Possibly. Um, there are areas of, say, the Great Smoky Mountain National Park that are just vast swaths of wilderness, but you have to actually hike out to these really, really wild areas. And it takes days to hike out to these really wild areas that even have a modicum of a possibility of having these people in them. So um, I don't know. It could be. Um, there's a possibility for anything, I would say, but I'm not sure. Um, like I said, always keep your questioning hat on. Kim Dresher said, those are like jungle warfare holes. Yeah, I'm I, I'm just glad I jumped into one. So I'm glad there were no punji sticks. Uh, Moondog Davis says exactly ambush holes. So I, uh, we just discovered those on Tuesday during that live stream. That was the first time we had ever seen those out there. We'd seen those smaller holes um, and we have those on a couple of the videos from the Grove. We have a couple of those smaller holes on there, several of those. We still don't have an explanation for some of them. Some of them look like there was maybe a, a fire out there and it was where trees had burned. Um, but these are huge. These are huge, just dug out holes. We went to an area in the Grove we had never been to before. So we had never seen these before. So I think when we go back out there, we're going to try to go and check those out a little more because it looked like there were several of them out there.
I wish my cat could be my co-host and read these for me so that I could do this. Oh, Barton Ellis here. What's up, Barton? What up, everybody? The weirder, the better. Yeah, um, we're trying to get as weird as possible um, with some of this stuff. We have a bunch of experiments lined up for the Grove. Um, we're definitely going to deploy the beacon. We deployed the beacon uh, on Equinox in North Georgia, and that was one of our last times that we did a real investigation in North Georgia. We deployed the beacon and we had a bunch of weird stuff happen. I had a weird mental effect from it. It affected me. It, it meant it affected me physically and mentally in a negative way. So, um, I, so of course we're going to take it out to the Grove and try it. Right. Um, but that's kind of why we left North Georgia. It started to get really dark up there spiritually. We know about these, people doing occult rituals up there. We found evidence of some weird stuff. We found parts of stuffed animals and clothes buried in holes. And I think that North Georgia just got very weird and disturbing for us. And then the whole Equinox thing where that affected me mentally and physically, we just kind of wanted to step away from it. And that's when the Grove came into our lives. So we've decided to go back to North Georgia. We did this long expedition out there, this investigation. So this, is, this video coming up is going to be kind of our reintroduction of North Georgia. And some stuff seems like it's changed out there a good bit. Shoo. Michael X says, that's great. Heard of a Bigfoot doing a spider crawl. Now we got to worry about them popping out of a spider hole. Yeah, that's really disturbing to me. Um, and that story is not the first time I've heard something similar to that. I've heard something similar to that before, but not with that much detail and not from a source that I completely trust at that. So that's got me a little on edge that that might be some kind of behavior that these creatures engage in. I'm never going to catch up. You guys know how far back I am. Let's see. <laughs> a spooktator Bob says, wait till you're in the middle of the deep dark woods at night and a bobcat screams. I went full on Moses and parted the trees getting out of there. Yeah, I, uh, I, I can probably unass an air. You guys see how fast I can walk. Um, I hate to say it, but I, I think if I got real freaked out, I'd just bolt. Um, and Joe's going to be screaming at me because he's going to be worried I'm going to fall into a hole. So, um, Bartonelli, where is brother Joe? Joe had to work late. Uh, I have no idea when he's coming home. He had to work. So he is indisposed. He had to work late today. Michael Tovar says, Jesse, have y'all found any more empty tents at the LBL recently? So Michael, we live in South Carolina. So for us to go to the LBL, we have to really make uh, that part of our schedule. We're going to go back to the LBL. We're going to wait till a lot of these other people are calmed down um, before we go back uh, because we like to go when there's not a ton of people out there. We like to go and just kind of go around just us two or meet up with Barton. Um, but we like to keep it. We meet up with Dewey Martin, but we like to keep it kind of small. So when we go back, we'll go back and we probably won't tell anybody except for that group of people when we're going, but it is like an eight hour drive for us to go up to the LBL. We have to take time off from work because Joe and I both have jobs. So we have to take time off work and then plan to go up there. And we usually go up there for about seven to 10 days at a time and go up there and just hit it hard and investigate. So next time we go up there, we're going to be looking. Um, so far, we've only found two abandoned tents. And when we found them, if you'll check out our videos on the subject, um, both tents were torched after we found them, which is very strange. David Nielsen was asking, any new activity in the LBL? I, again, I don't know. That's a Barton, Dewey, Martin question right now. So uh, we're too far away. We have to kind of, we have to kind of plan that out. It's a long drive and a very expensive trip for us to get up there. So we have to plan all that out. 
because we both have to take like two weeks off work and drive up there. Helen, Ellen's holistic heaven. Congrats on 20,000. What is Joe's other job? He um, works for the CIA covering up cryptid crimes. So it's very convenient for this one. Very convenient. That's when we know there's a cryptid crime. We just go right to it. That's how we get our evidence. All right. My whole damn family. Thanks, <laughs> Sir G. My whole damn family is feral. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Uh, so we went up to North Carolina uh, weekend before last. We went up to North Carolina. I posted a picture of my ramp, my ramp eggs. I always get ramps this time of year. Um, ramps are insanely good for you, and you can only get them in April and May. But um, we went up to North Carolina, and uh, I kind of wanted to talk about this a little bit if you guys want to. I'm going to go through the chat here. We went up there and I was talking to my aunt and she was telling me about, she was telling me about this, just some old Appalachian folk healing stuff, which I'm always very, very interested in. I'm always really into that um, granny witchery, but she told me a bunch of really cool uh, stories about my family and some folk healing incidents involved her, my dad and everybody. We might get to that a little bit later. Trying to catch up. Sorry, I'm never gonna catch up. Never. Talking about the holes. Okay, this is interesting. So talking about those painted markers that we found out there in the woods. I was listening to Coast to Coast and said something about those painted markers leading to underground bases and to be careful, possibly people being held underground. So what's weird about that is we, Joe was using his spectrum analyzer, which can pick up radio signals and anything like that. And we were out there, this is when we went out there with Denim Devil and we did a live stream with him with us. And we were out there and Joe started picking up the 1.6 signal. And it's that 1.6 that you get at Skinwalker Ranch. And a lot of people think that that's akin to they're also being deep underground military bases. We've also gotten that exact same signal in different places in the LBL when there's a lot of theories that the same kind of thing is going on in the LBL. So that could be a possibility. That land is, um, it is, I, I guess it's considered public land, I guess. It's, it is definitely um, federally owned. So there is a possibility, I don't know. But it's an interesting theory about those markers. I guess we could go out there and try to find them again and then see if they lead us anywhere. Trapdoor spider, 800 pound trapdoor spider. You can see how far back I am right now. Brandon Ouellette. Asks, any laughing beast updates for some reason that creeps me out a bit interesting so we did the laughing beast stuff we did that a few god that was probably six months ago was that six eight months ago um a lady got in touch with us just to get you up to speed a lady got in touch with us um i almost said who it was but she got in touch with us her husband was a moonshiner and he had this area where it was down by a creek and he would go down there all the time and he got up there in age, and this is after he had stopped moonshining down there. He had always heard weird screams and howls and calls out there. Um, but when he got up there in age, he just liked the area. So he got his wife to take him out there. He was blind, but he got his wife to take him out there. And she's the one that actually got in touch with us and contacted us about this. But they were out there, and you could sit out there, and she'd be like, it's like clockwork. At dusk, you just hear them yell. You hear them scream and all that. Well, there was this one time they were out there and something came through the woods and it sounded like this maniacal laughing, not even a howl, not a scream, not anything like that. It was a maniacal laughter coming straight at them. Um, and then there was another instance where it slapped the side of their truck. 
So we went down to that area and we went down initially on a scouting expedition. And we actually heard these howls and these calls at dusk exactly like they said. And we scouted around the area a few times and checked it out. But I cannot get that lady to get back in touch with me to give me some more details. But we really need to get back down there and check it out before that cicada season kicks off. Because I know that's going to be pretty nightmarish when that does. I hate to be boring. The solo show here. I'm trying to go through the chat. <laughs> uh, what? Okay, April Black is asking, does dog man have black goo in its mouth? I heard that from another on another channel. I have never directly looked at a dog man. Um, I have we got a thermal image on summer solstice a few years back in the LBL, our first trip to the LBL. But I've never had a class A sighting of a Sasquatch or dog man. So I can't tell you. Um, I can't tell you this, the answer to this. Uh, the people that I know who have seen them maybe could chime in. I don't, I don't know. Um, but that's an odd one. That is an odd one. Kelly S. Thank you for that, ma'am. Very exciting on edge and intense at times. Yes, it is. Um, it's a lot of, it's a very interesting line of work, I'd say. So. Going through. <laughs> Rissell, I always jo had Joe pegged as an alphabet agent. It's that haircut I get in. He's got that uh, fed, that fed cut. Going through. It is weird doing this by myself. <laughs> Scott Taylor, Joe just gave me my order at Taco Bell. <laughs> you know, he'd probably be pretty good at using that sour cream cough gun. He'd probably be great at that. Joe Wick. Suji, what is a ramp? All right, so a ramp is almost like a garlicky onion. Um, it's like a, it's a, they're only available, they only grow, and they grow in the Appalachian region, but they're, they only grow wild, um, and they're very, very pungent, but they only are in season April to early May, so you have to kind of get on them when you want them, but a bunch of chefs around the world have been really, really uh, latching on to them. And if you over harvest them, you can pretty much decimate the population. Um, so you got to kind of be careful about how you harvest them. Used to be as like a poor people food that nobody wanted. Um, I always liked them. I like them sauteed with a little bacon grease, but, um, or pickled, they're delicious pickled, but it used to be kind of a, um, it used to be like considered like a poor people food. Nobody really wanted it until until they wanted it. And now they're over harvesting them. Spam, spam talk. All right, Cynthia, what do you have here? Ideas for experiments, booby traps, set hiking, and something rips and something trips them. You will hear two trackers to stick to a cryptid and be able to track it with your phone as it moves. You will see on your phone where it is. I don't know when we when we camp, we tend to put up those little we put up little trip wires sometimes with like bear bells on them. We'll do that sometimes when we camp. Um, so that's, I don't know about booby traps because I would be concerned about if we do something that's kind of harmful that Joe and I will bumble through the woods at some point and booby trap ourselves. Um, <laughs> uh, that would be a, a serious problem. Um, the trackers, a couple of people have done the tracker thing where they have these little sticky barbs. I think Expedition Bigfoot stole that idea from somebody else um, where they have trackers attached to these little sticky barbs that stick in the hair. 
So uh, that's a good idea. Uh, if I find an area that looks like an area where something walks through a bit, I just have to find the little sticky barb tracker things. Todd Hall, you've been a member for five months. Thank you, bro. Seven System asks, how do I feel about Sleep Token? I never listen to Sleep Token. I'm a, I'm a ghost fan. I'm a ghost freak. So I've never listened to Sleep Token. Todd Hall, thank you, sir. I appreciate you very much for that $20 super sticker. That is very awesome. Crystal said that he heard about the Black Goo, forgot what podcast. That's, a, that's an odd one. And black goo. So I guess that would suggest that these are like supernatural. Like they leave some sort of um, supernatural sort of spit, like what is that ectoplasm <laughs> behind, I guess. That's the black goo. Rick Tavignier says, you guys got to get back to the LBL. The videos are addictive. I know everyone, everyone by heart already when we don't have it on our schedule right now. Um, it's going to be insane with ticks. We hate going when it's tick season, but we don't have it on our schedule right now to go back to the LBL. I hate to go in the summer, but we might end up going during the summer. Uh, but we'll go back. We will go back, but we just, our plates are insanely full with all of our other research areas that are closer to here right now. Um, we just got back into North Georgia and we're really starting to dig back in to North Georgia, but we will go back to the LBO. I know that the small town monsters film that we are going to be in, um, is releasing, I think late spring, early summer. And that is centered around the LBL, Joe and I are in that. And, um, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be a really cool release. I know that Martin's in it as well. So, um, that will hopefully hold you over on seeing Helvet Holler in the LBL for just a, a little bit until we can get our butts back up there. Travis Shaver, did you get the jalapeno Vienna sausages yet? No. Did you send me Vienna sausages or am I supposed to go get them? I will go get them. I will get them. I will go get some tomorrow, actually. Um, I have not checked my PO box if you've sent them, but I will go get some tomorrow because that sounds delicious. I'm a big fan of the barbecue Vienna sausages, honestly. Tater soup with some ramps. Oh, now you're talking my language. That might be what I make myself for dinner tonight. Yeah, they did the sticky trackers on my expedition. Thing, but somebody else did that before them. Um, somebody else did that. I cannot, Joe would know right off the top of his head. He is an encyclopedia of all knowledge, but he would absolutely know what that, who did that first. But somebody else did the sticky tracker thing first. Um, they also, you know, <laughs> they they took a lot of little ideas from a lot of people for that show. David Nelson, 1999, $20 for the 20000 Thank you, bro. That is awesome. 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 Appreciate it. We might go, we might get back to the LBL with all this. Did you watch the Bloody Truth Patty film? No. Um, I'm assuming that's gonna be about the Bluff Creek Massacre rumor. Um, story that everybody kind of talks about. I'm not sure. I'll check it out. I will put it on my list. Michael Tobar asks, Jesse, have you and Joe been to an area doing field research and afterwards said, nope, not going back again? Um, yes. Uh, the first area that we kind of went legend tripping to that actually inspired us to start the channel and start filming all of our expeditions We've not returned since that day. We have not been back there. And it's been it's been probably six years or so. Um, but we have not returned to that location since. I'm thinking we're going to go back and make a big deal about it. Because <laughs> it's going to be kind of our return to where it all started, where it all began. 
Um, but I'm still super nervous about going back there. That was probably one of the scariest instances of my life. It really scared me so bad. And there's been some recent stuff going on. There's been some recent missing people and recent deaths in that area. So I'm a little nervous about going back up there, but I think we're going to eventually go back. Um, and that area is called Panther Town Valley. It's in North Carolina, but it is a very strange area. Ah, here we go in wax. In wax, is it? Yeah. Uh, North American Wooded Con uh, Conservancy did the Tag Seven project. Hit a tracker and a and a burdock and tracked it until the battery ran out. Aha! I knew somebody would know. Yes, 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 yes. I knew somebody would know. Somebody would know. Kim said, if you like ghosts, you'll like sleep token. I will check them out. I must have missed for somebody used a terrible word. This is. Thank you for my mods, by the way. Thank you to my mods because <laughs> I'm all alone adrift at sea today. And I'm definitely not going to go as late as Joe does with me um, because I'm not going to be able to keep up during all of this. Where is this? Joe's already on strike. I'm lost in the chat. Somebody asked about Skateboard Swamp. We still haven't been there. Um, and that's what's crazy is we are in South Carolina. We're not near the Skateboard Swamp. We're in the up upstate of South Carolina. So... Um, we're in the northern part of the state, so we've got a, it would be a little bit of a trip to the skateboard swamp, but we've always wanted to go. Um, ever since reading Lyle Blackburn's book and looking into the subject, um, you really, it's an interesting story, and there's a lot of hearsay about was it hoaxed, was it not, um, but we really want to go check that out, kind of add Lizard Man to our repertoire. Um, especially since it's like South Carolina's most famous cryptid. It's like the South Carolina cryptid. For a long time, there were no Bigfoot reports really coming out in any official channels in South Carolina. Now there's tons coming out because a lot more people have ways to make those reports and actually discuss those experiences they have. But there's really been, um, until recently, not a lot of other reports of other cryptids other than the lizard man. And it was kind of to the point where it's like, all we have is the lizard man. But um, ever since, you know, we've been doing the Dark Corner series for a while now, we've had crazy experiences up there. And we actually started doing the Dark Corner series because of the Sasquatch reports we were receiving um, from, from the audience and from people that knew we did this. So that's why we actually started doing the Dark Corner series and really focusing on searching for Sasquatch in South Carolina because not a lot of people had um, put a light on that yet. Ah, well, looks like Joe entered the chat at some point there. I see you have time to get in my chat and not come and do your job here, buddy boy. Black goo. Yeah, talk about the black goo. I don't know. If you guys figure out who, what podcast or whatever, that might have been a story. That would have been somebody's story. Uh, maybe somebody had an encounter where they saw black goo coming out of a dog man. I don't know. I, I've never heard that before. Uh, this is the first time I've heard about this. So, Joe is not sick. Joe is at work. Rhonda asks, what happened that scared you so bad? So, talk about the Panther Town Valley incident. Um, Joe and I, this is before we started the channel. This is what inspired us to start the channel. I've told this story several times. I'll give you just a quick rundown on it. We decided to go legend tripping. Um, and we listened to a bunch of podcasts and, uh, we listened to all these podcasts and all these stories and stuff. And this guy went on this podcast and he was talking about the shape shifting, witch at a waterfall and he gave the location and we're like, Oh, that's, we can get there. I don't know where that is. So we went up there to go check it out and kind of just do some legend tripping. And we experienced probably the most weird supernatural stuff. I actually blacked out at one point. I got insanely sick. 
Uh, Joe saw what looked like a face in the trees. There were sticks and stones thrown at us. Sticks were arranged in the trail um, in these weird symbols. I mean, it was just all kinds of stuff. It didn't happen all at once. It was through the course of us going out there. Our GP we had two GPSs that failed uh, through the course of that. And it was just terrifying. And that's kind of like a, it was like a turning point for us. And we had to decide at that point, are we going to quit doing this or are we going to go get some cameras and start filming us doing this? And that just kicked it off. That's what started us doing Helmet Holler and us filming all of these weird expeditions. Um, I guess you could say we're still just legend tripping, just filming it now and really going for it. Joe, you're a slacker. See, everybody's, everybody's joining in here. Help it, Joe. This is like the NWO splitting up in the WWF. Oh, yeah. So are you the wolf pack or are you just the black and white class? Like, I'd like to be the wolf pack if that's okay. Kim Santa, welcome as a member to the channel. Uh, make sure that you go through our back catalog of members only videos. We have a lot of stuff from the LBL and we are doing members lives uh, pretty regularly. It's live investigations for our members. Uh, we did one last Tuesday where we got a really crazy scream out in the Grove and we'll be doing one coming up soon um, for everybody else. Uh... Joe says that the black goo is a recent addition to the Dogman lore. Black goo was in the X Files. Yes, there's a lot of stuff in the X Files. <laughs> Hello, Jesse. You still walk like a cop, you know. I'm editing this video in North Georgia. I'm editing this North Georgia video. <laughs> I just, I'm so self conscious about it now. I'm just watching myself. I'm like, I do walk like a cop. I do walk like a cop. Sorry. It's that big belt. I have like that utility belt on. It's my Batman belt. It makes me walk like a cop. I can't help it. Gotta swing these hips around and get that belt around. Stingray said I need to dock Joe's pay. Yeah, I need to. It's a good idea. Ray Baker asks, where did you get the name Hellbent Holler? Um, when I was 21, I got hellbent tattooed on my knuckles. So I've always had hellbent on me. Um, and it just, it, it describes my personality. I'm, uh, I'm very tenacious and it's very, I'm very difficult. <laughs> you can't stop me when I want to do something. Um, so I've just always been hellbent on doing whatever I want to do. So um, that's part of it. And then the highlight part is we are from the Appalachian region. So hellbent holler was born. Um, I think it describes us to a T. It's where we're from, who we are, and what we do. And um, you know, I think it's I, I think it's just become uh, it's taken on a life of itself in a way. Uh, Mike C, I answered the question about an area I wouldn't go back to. I say I won't go back to Panther Town, but we're going to go back. I mean, we're going to go back. You know, nothing will keep us out. <laughs> Mark D, you got a battle belt, Jesse. Yeah, it's a 511 battle belt. I love it. Um, I get, I'm able to keep a knife on me, my flashlight, my gloves um and my thermal at all times and i've actually been able to capture more thermal stuff because i actually have my thermal on me on my hip all the time so ease of access has made it to where i can actually get better footage and actually pull it out when we hear something and go oh that's a deer and not worry about it or if i see something weird in the woods i'm able to actually capture video of it a lot quicker so the battle belt situation has helped out a lot
Lisa Johnson says, hi, Jesse. I had my first UFO experience last week. I saw a large tic-tac-shaped object fly behind my home. I saw it very briefly between the trees. There has been an uptick in UFO sightings lately. I saw um, in the news that there was a sighting at Myrtle Beach recently in Horry County. Um, so and now Myrtle Beach has had a history of UFO sightings, but it seems like there's a lot more sightings going on lately. And I'm not sure if a lot of this is just the ease of reporting. And we discussed this before. Are these upticks in ease of reporting? Um, so everybody's so connected. So when people have these experiences, they can actually broadcast them a lot easier, tell somebody a lot easier and a lot quicker. And it just automatically boom goes and it's around the world in just a couple of seconds or is there an uptick in this activity? Is there more activity going on? Um, I think that that's still just a big question, even with UFOs or Dogman, Sasquatch. It just seems like it's getting more and more and more um, on all paranormal fronts. Christopher Lineberry asks, are y'all going to do in interviews with people coming up this year in the paranormal field? Um, I want to do an interview show where I interview people. Uh, what, right now, what I'm trying to do is, as always, I have to make things more complicated for myself than it needs to be. Um, I don't really want to do the interview type show where we're both on StreamYard, just kind of talking on StreamYard, two talking heads on StreamYard. I, when I do my interviews, I would like to do more one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I'd like to do more in-person type stuff. So um, we've got some stuff coming up where I can hopefully start doing these one-on-one -on -one interviews and really have a real conversation and an intimate conversation with people. Paramedic says, back to the black goo conversation. Uh, white tail bucks put out black liquid that thickens as it gets older from their scent glands. Awesome. So, all right. Do that. Do that. What you would add. Use that as you will. As you will. <laughs> Black goo. Feeling Ling Ling says, Jesse, bring back that purple, yo. Um, I've got to redo the podcasting studio. So we're going to be green until I can get a new wall situation put together. So the purple was too uh, reflective. Henry E. White Jr. says, these days I can't wear the wide battle belt or chest rig. I have five to six molly vest things. The shoulders can usually do the job. You can add more to the molly vest. Yeah, I carry a backpack too. So it's like hard for me to put everything on and also have the backpack because I can't put everything in a molly vest. Um, if I didn't have to carry so much stuff with my backpack, I would do that. But my, my setup kind of works for me because I have my chest rig. Of course, there's like a system with putting it all on. I put on my chest rug, which I keep my firearm in. Then I put on my belt and then I put on my backpack. But at least everything can sit kind of close to my body and it's kind of tightened down because I have to hike long distances with a lot of this stuff. So I kind of need everything kind of cinched down and just um, high and tight on me, you know. Easy Sniper says, hi, Jesse. Do you ever have to worry about packs of coyotes? Just wondering if it's a concern or not. Here in the UK, we fear the angry, <laughs> angry mozzie, and that's about it. Uh, we have packs of coyotes around us <laughs> often. We got them on camera, like the audio. We get the audio very often. We've got audio of coyotes going absolutely bananas in the black circle video when joe touches that scorch mark on the ground all of a sudden this giant pack of coyotes just goes absolutely bananas um and then recently in the grove we were out there and we were hearing this strange like guttural moan growl yell type thing and it's as soon as that happened it set off a giant pack of coyotes out there um coyotes are not known for attacking people they 
generally are pretty scared of people. It does freak me out to be out there with them. I'll be honest with you. So as soon as I hear them, I'm out there with my thermal because I, I don't trust people saying, oh, they're going to be scared of you. I'm still scared of spiders in my house. I know that the spider is not going to come and bite my face off, um, but I'm still scared of them. <laughs> and so coyotes still make me nervous. Even if people say that they're scared of me, I don't trust that. I'm just going to constantly be on the lookout for them because we have a ton of coyotes in the woods here. Michael Kotovar says, if alone, coyotes will attack. All right, I think I'm catching up, guys. Look at me. Gold star for Jesse. Suji, okay, I'll ask what's a mozzie. I don't know. Is that a derogatory term? It might be a derogatory term. If so, you're in trouble. I wanted to just talk about coyotes, and here you're using derogatory terms about I don't even know what. I don't know what that means. It's going to have to enlighten me. Positive note. Jesse, you should be dead proud of your huge progress with video production. I've noticed this. I don't think I'm alone. Thank you very much. I, it has been a learning process. It is a, uh, every day is a learning process. I'm constantly having to do this. Um, so every video, I feel like I get a little better with it, but I'm self-taught with everything. I gotta, I'm going back to school in the fall um, to get some more formal training. That way I can improve what I'm doing because that's what I do always. I just, again, make things much harder on myself. Um, so I'm gonna go back to school in the fall to get more formalized training in, um, in video editing and other things, photography, videography. Military right, retiree radical for Christ, J KJV. Oh, there we go. I got it. Uh, Jesse, are you guys going back to the dark corner again soon? You got to be careful there, though. That cult and cult activity there is scary. So the dark corner, um, we have not been to the dark corner in a little while either. We really got caught up on the Grove, like really caught up on the Grove. Um, a lot of that cult and occult activity is taking place in North Georgia, which is where we've started returning to uh, recently. So, um but it seems like some of that has died off. <laughs> I put an X over Joe. Yes, he's not here. Right away, is Jess, do you think in the future there might be some baby cryptic hunters? Just curious. No, <laughs> I think I'm probably uh i'm 36 i don't think i i don't think i'm having children so mozzies are mosquitoes okay thank you sheila Evelyn. you are amazing i didn't know what a mozzie was it's a, mos a mosquito a mosquito see i'm a yayhaw it's a mosquito C-E-U-U-E-C says, Jesse, what have you found that works to keep ticks away? Permethrin works really well. However, if you have cats, you can't use it. Um, we have cats, so we can't use it ever. So we use um, use a Sawyer brand, DEET, Deep Woods. So we'll spray that all over our boots and all over us. But you're still going to get ticks all over you. Ticks are so bad, and they're supposed to be really bad this year. Unfortunately, um, we're not looking forward to that. I was watching the news the other day and this lady from the CDC was on there and she was giving incorrect advice on how to remove a tick. She was saying that you need to take tweezers and just pull the tick off of you. Do not do that, um, especially if the tick is starting to embed in you. Um, if the head is embedded in you, you need to go to a doctor and get it removed. Um, there is a possibility you can, you probably could get Lyme disease because if it's on there for a certain period of time, it can transfer Lyme disease to you. You don't want Lyme disease. Um, 
So if you do have a tick on you, I do suggest before the summer kicks off and the ticks get really bad that you get something called a tick key. That's what we use all the time. We always take them with us to the LBL. After we're done for the day, after we're done with our expedition for the day and our investigations when we're out there, we do the tick inspection of shame. Joe and I get completely nude with flashlights and inspect each other very closely um, because I love steak and I don't want to develop a red meat allergy. So I will take that um, over developing a red meat allergy and getting Lyme disease and all of the autoimmune issues that come along with that. So I'll take the uh, flashlight inspection of shame any day over that. So just make sure that you get a tick key. That is the correct thing to use to remove ticks. It you slide it over it and the tick comes right off, right off of you. Do not take tweezers and rip that thing off of there because that is a bad idea. So, and I know a lot of people have other folk ways in which they do it, but get a tick key. It is worth it. They're, I think, less than $10. They're just a little metal thing. Put one on your keychain. Just keep a bunch of them. So, get a tick key. Mosquitoes, everybody's telling me, that's what is, okay, mosquitoes. I don't know what these Australians get up to. They're, they're crazy. They've got all kinds of, they got all kinds of stuff out there. You never know. Martin Gross, Jesse is doing an awesome job tonight, as always. Thank you, Martin. I'm glad that somebody, somebody believes. Goshawk has a tick key. Awesome, dude. That is, those are, that's exactly what you need. That's exactly what you need. Sam Burton's had Lyme disease for 14 months. It's awful, awful. And we're having tick stories. We're swapping, swapping, swapping. Yeah, we can't use permethrin though because we have cats. Um, Lisa Marie, thank you for that, madam. Do you and Joe ever camp out all night on a search? We camp out a lot. So uh, in this latest video, we we're out there for a few days. So we stopped camping in tents though, and I will never camp in. <laughs> A hammock ever after all the stuff we've seen in the woods and experienced in the woods i will never hammock camp i will never do it i will never be a human burrito for some creature out there um and i'm actually to the point where i'm freaked out about tent camping in remote areas i am too freaked out to do it honestly so now we've got a setup that we use uh, where we're kind of in the back of the truck and I feel a little safer in that situation. So um, we do camp out there. We load up all of our stuff and we're able to kind of grab and go. We only take freeze dried food. Um, I think I, I have like this short video that I did while we were out there camping uh, on this last expedition we were on. And I think I'm going to put that up for members, just kind of like a behind the scenes of our little camp area and just how kind of bare bones we go because we have to be able to, when we get a report, grab and go to an area. Or if we need to get everything up and get out of an area, unask the situation, we can do that pretty quickly as well. <laughs> Cowboy4572 says, hello, just imagining a Bigfoot confusingly watching the flashlight dance around the tent, not knowing it's simply a tick check. Yes. Oh, and, and the tent, like if you're in a tent, the dome is so short. You're just trying to fumble around and make sure you get all the, the crevices, you know, it's great. Yep. It's not a, a humbling experience at all. Tick spoons ticked off. My mom and I used to truck camp all the time. Yeah, we had to go that route. Um, I just get freaked out. I just cannot, I cannot chill um, in a tent or definitely not in a hammock. Never, never, never. Naked tick inspection. Is that while y'all investigate alone? Yeah, yeah, you've got us. You got us on that one. 
Rhonda Williams, how do you keep your makeup so nice camping? Just wondering, you always look great. There is a, um, I do have part in the video that I'm putting out where I'm completely makeup free when I wake up in the morning because I kind of talk about the stuff that I heard through the night. Um, I, I'm very vain. I'm not afraid to admit it. I do, I wear makeup. I don't leave the house without makeup on generally. Um, and I'm not going to be anywhere without my makeup on during the day. I have my makeup off in this video coming up, but I go and I have my tiny little travel kit and I do a little makeup because no matter what I do, it doesn't matter if I have makeup on or I don't, there's going to be some people commenting on the video that if, I'm, if I am wearing makeup, they're going to make fun of my makeup. If I'm not wearing makeup, they're going to make fun of me for being ugly or not wearing makeup. So I choose to wear my little makeup because I like it. I like how I look. And obviously, I take pride in my appearance. And so that's what I'm doing. So, um, but I have a small little travel makeup kit. And I do all my skincare and everything too. I'm very particular about that. Um, I just, I care about my appearance and that's that. Tis what it is. I'm not out there curling my hair, but I'm definitely putting eyeliner on. If nothing else, there will be mascara and eyeliner, if, even if there's nothing else. Dragon Tears 13, this is correct. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I went in tent camp after you found the abandoned tents that had been slashed and the door ripped off. So in the area in North Georgia where we go, there is a there's a story that is eerily similar to what we found in the LBO. And I'm not going to say the name of the guy, but it's, it's an actual person who went missing um, in, in the 1990s, in the early 1990s. He went missing in this North Georgia area that we're investigating, that we've been investigating for a few years. And they found his tent in the exact same condition as we found that first tent that we found in the LBL, ripped open. And they claim that he cut it to vent it. That makes no sense whatsoever. Nobody would cut their tent to vent it. But it was cut just like the first tent we found in the LBL, and the door was ripped. So um, it's weird to find those similarities with these multiple cases so far apart. But yeah, I'm not I'm not a big fan of tent camping as a result of that. Back of the truck camping is called overlanding now. Ah, yes. Alex Rangel says, can you tell us about your Garmin watch? Do you like it? Joe and I both have these, they're Garmin instincts. Um, they have a GPS uh, in them built into them and you can actually do a mapping follow me feature. So if in the event we have two GPS units, in the event that one of those or both of those fail, this is a fail safe. We can always use our Garmin watches. So we use this track me feature on these. If we're going out and we're going off trail, we're going in random directions in the woods. If we get lost, we can always, if push comes to shove, follow these. This isn't the really, really nice model where you have like a full map or a full color map or anything, but it gives you general directions. So if you're lost, you can kind of get out of the woods. But these are great for a fail safe for that. 40 in Tennessee asks, random question for you, Jesse. Are there a lot of mound sites in your guys' region of the Carolinas? If so, have you guys done any recent investigations on such? There are a few mound sites around here. I actually grew up less than half a mile from a uh, mound site, a Cherokee mound site. And I didn't even know it was there until I looked on the, there's this map overlay that I use all the time. Pro tip here for you. Um, it's a map overlay that has mounds and earthworks, native earthworks. And I use that all the time in my research. That is one of my go-to things that I use when an area is, um, when somebody reports something to me from a certain area, I go to that, are there mound sites? Are there ancient sites where there was Native American activity? Could these be sites of ritual? Could these be sites of ceremony? So I always go to that first um, we have investigated some areas near those, but they tend to be protected cultural sites. So you can't really do too many intense investigations or night investigations that we like to do because those, again, either are on private land or on protected cultural sites.
All right. I'm probably going to wrap it up in a bit because I've been talking by myself here. Um, let's see. I the tent door, they probably tried to cut the back of the tent to escape. Yeah, okay, yeah. So after the tent door was ripped open, whoever was there probably tried to cut the back of the tent to escape. That was a theory floated about that first site we found in the LBL, is that that's what that guy did. Um, when we, if we go back to that video, you can see the door was ripped open and then the back of the tent was sliced like it was sliced with a knife. So it looks like he tried to cut it open and roll out. Um, and I think that's what happened with this guy in North Georgia. I think that it's this exact same MO. It's, it's almost exactly like to the T exactly the same. And I've been looking into this guy's case for a long time. Um, it kind of stuck with me. And I think about this person. He left a family behind. He had kids. His kids didn't know where it went. They stopped the search um, after a short period of time. It's weird. They had this whole search party go out looking for them. This is the guy in North Georgia. They had a whole search party go out and look for him. And then it abruptly stopped the search and just stopped looking for him. Um, I don't know if they found something weird and then just were like, we've got to stop the search or what happened. They never found him. They never found any evidence of what happened to him. And they just stopped the search. His um, There was a missing persons forum online that I was on and part of. And one of his kids actually got on there and they were like, well, they just stopped looking for my dad. And I don't know why. And it was like the saddest thing I've ever seen. Um, but you have to think that there have to be other cases like this. If we're finding this in the LBO all the way in Kentucky, and then there's a story that is almost exactly the same in North Georgia, you know, hundreds of miles away, how many other people has this happened to? How many other missing people are out there? How many have the exact same story? You know, it's just insane. It's insane to think about. Truth Walker says, those tents remind me of the diet law of past incident. Exactly. Yes. I'm obsessed with diet law of past, too. That would be the one place I'd like to go. If I could go um, international, <laughs> Helmet Holler International. Um, if I could do that, I would love to investigate the diet law of past incident. I would love to go there and just um, investigate that area. It's stuck with me for a very long time. I think I saw something when I was a kid on the History Channel about the Diet Love Pass, and I just became absolutely obsessed with it. Um, and it's just one of those things that I'm just completely obsessed with and looked into for years. All right, I am going to wrap it up, guys. I know I'm ending earlier than Joe and I usually end it, but I'm all by my lonesome today. I've been just annoying you all by myself. Um, so if you guys have anything else you want to throw out there, I appreciate you guys joining me for the live stream today though. Um, and just listening to me rattle off by myself. Um, as you see, Joe has been X out of the show for now. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be back to be with you guys next week. Um, members, I do want to say, keep an eye out on your notifications. Um, the, Grove Experiments series is going to continue. We're going to continue doing these experiments in the Grove, and we've got another one that we're going to try very, very soon. So make sure you have your notifications on for that, for when we go back out there. Um, we're going to have some better audio collection equipment with us uh, after that screen that we got. So we're going to see if we can capture any sort of weird screens or anything like that before. Pork Chop Express, thank you for that $9.99 here at the end. Jesse, all that quartz the other night got me thinking that mineral could luminesce to a creature that can see more in the ultraviolet spectrum. Y'all should observe it in full spectrum. Lucky for us, we do have a full spectrum camera. So I think we'll bring that out with us um, in these quartz rich areas and maybe check that out and see if we can kind of get um, a better image of what's going on. Uh, the full spectrum camera we have, it records an IR and the UV spectrum. So we'll take that out there and see if we can get a glint of something and see if that kind of tells us anything. So that's a good idea. We will give it a go and we have the technology to do so. All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining me. I think we're good. 
Mozzie is a slang term for mosquito. Yeah, you see, it's a derogatory term for a mosquito. How dare you? How dare you? From the Mosquito Council of America, we are speaking out against you and your derogatory terms. We will have your blood, sir. All right. I think that was enough. You guys had enough? All right. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm just going to go through the end here. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. You guys are the best. Hopefully Joe will be back with me on the show next week. Um, it looks like I'm going to break that video up into two. So keep an eye out. I don't think I'll have it done in the next couple of days. But members, keep an eye out for a notification about a live stream. We'll be doing some more Grove experiments. And you guys will be privy to that live in that investigation. We got some cool stuff up our sleeve. So keep an eye out. I appreciate you guys joining me for this. You guys are the best. Um, I will take away this. I'm not going to delete it this time. I'm going to re-upload it. But, you know, you never know when Joe's going to just jump ship on me. You never know when he just, just goes, goes willy-nilly to the wind. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. I will see you all another day. <laughs>